Hello everybody, thank you for watching the Universal Observations uh, YouTube channel here. Today we're going to cover uh, the Skyguider Pro by Ioptron. And one of the things we like to do here at Universal Observations is cover some things, maybe the details that are a little bit difficult to see in online images or find in instruction manuals or just come about by experience. So uh, what we're going to be covering today is this Skyguider Pro uh, mount uh, from Ioptron. And first of all, this is the uh, complete kit. It comes with the uh, mount itself, the alt as uh, base, uh, and a few different uh, mounting options for uh, different uh, brackets and, and different ways to mount it, as well as uh, uh, a nice counterweight bracket, the declination bracket, uh, and a really beefy counterweight here. I think that's three pounds. You um, uh, three pounds, uh, and. Um, one of the first things that I, I couldn't quite understand from some of the images um, uh, that were on websites and whatnot is uh, people were saying, yes, you can mount this on 3 8 or um, quarter inch. And uh, if we turn the thing upside down here, oh yeah, this is one of the other uh, mounts that I forgot to mention. Uh, and I'll show that in a little bit more detail. But uh, uh, this threaded insert uh, allows you to mount on quarter quarter by 20 or you can remove this and uh, uh, mount it on 3 8 now a lot of times you don't need that but that's a nice little accessory to have if you're like me who's really just starting out in in um, astrophotography uh, it's a nice little insert to have to use in a lot of different ways but uh, the uh, alt as bracket here um, is ready set up for 3 8 which some of the more beefy uh, larger tripods uh, are set up for and when you first uh, uh, you know have this mounted and in, in like this you might miss this extra little uh, insert there so that's uh, a nice little thing a um, couple things that I want to point out is I've seen some uh, questions or people commenting that they can't quite uh, get Polaris in view uh, and that might be due to uh, light pollution and or uh, just their location uh, but one of the things that uh, I, I haven't seen highlighted too often is that uh, the polar scope here once you take the little uh, lens cap off uh, is uh, uh, actually focusable so you have to turn this thing um, quite a bit it's pretty um, fine adjustment and I think if you uh, tighten it all the way down and then back it off, just a few turns is about where focus comes in. And it, and it makes sense to do this uh, maybe during the day, uh, be able to get that in, in view. And one of the things, you, you got to remember to pop off the lens cap here. And there's a couple of different ways to put this lens cap on. You can either put it right here uh, on, on the bracket itself, uh, or uh, once you have um, the declination bracket uh, put on, uh, it can be the lens cap can go on the uh, the, the face of this hole here, uh, so that's an, another thing to pay attention to. Um, let's see. So uh, the focusing was was one piece that I wanted to bring up. Uh, another piece and uh, is is the polar alignment scope itself, and you're going to need a um, uh, probably download an app if you're using. Um, an iPhone, I believe uh, iOptron has an app for iPhone. If you're using uh, an Android or other device, um, you'll probably have to pay for it and download a, a, a third party app for that. But they're, they're relatively inexpensive and they pretty, uh, work pretty well. Uh, I'm going to try to insert one here in the video. So, this is the application uh, that I use for Android called Polar Finder, and I had to pay for this, but uh, this is kind of a zoomed in screenshot of what you'll see and I've highlighted with uh, the light green circle uh, where you'll find this little dot. Now this dot will move around this uh, uh, reticle here, uh, this little gauge, uh, depending on where you're at uh, in your latitude and the time of day. And uh, uh, if you didn't know this, uh, uh, you line up Polaris not exactly in the middle of the crosshairs of your polar finder, uh, but where this little dot shows up on the um, uh, app. And that calculates uh, all different kinds of things, basically, where, you, where you're at uh, on the globe uh, and, and the offset that it'll be just a little bit for um, uh, 
uh, Polaris. And then the next thing that you'll see is when you look through the scope, this is kind of what you'll see. And I've highlighted with a green circle here uh, the very little faint white dot. Now I hope this comes up uh, uh, through YouTube, but um, that is actually Polaris. I took a screenshot through the, the polar scope with my phone. Uh, that's why it's kind of a little blurry around the edges, but uh, that is actually Polaris. Uh, in my uh, finder scope so you need to try to match what you see on the app as close as you can and this is why I fine-tune 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 right before I, I uh, start my session uh, so that uh, you get the best tracking that uh, you can possibly get uh, so you'll uh, once you take a look at the app then you'll use the uh, different knobs on the um, uh, alt as base uh, to be able to uh, move uh, where this shows up in your polar scope uh, both up and down and left and right and uh, once you get that then you lock it in place and then start your imaging session so and uh, so then that's how you use uh, the polar alignment scope and one of the things that I do is uh, I'll set it up uh, uh, set the alt as bracket here and I apologize because even before I use this I, I actually dropped my tripod with this and I broke off the little handle fortunately uh, I can take a pair of vice grips and, and, and it still works but you don't usually have to move this very much uh, but you set this to your uh, latitude and that's pretty close um, uh, it doesn't have to move very much but what I tend to do is I'll set this up as kind of a course adjustment and uh, once I get everything mounted on the tripod with the scope and everything exactly where I want it uh, then I do kind of an, a medium adjustment on the polar alignment and I find out that uh, through extra weight and extra torque and things um, it will move that alignment a little bit and then right before I start my imaging session I'll with everything where it needs to be everything pointed where it needs to be everything balanced uh, then I'll do a fine uh, last minute adjustment uh, on the uh, uh, polar alignment and that's how I found that this this tracker t tends to work really really well really uh, pretty decently long uh, exposures longer than you might expect for a device like this um, with no star trails pretty pretty pinpoint uh, accuracy so uh, very very happy with that um, so some other things that I found um, is um, oh by the way uh, since I'm, I'm moving this out of the way to look at uh, my notes here uh, this also comes with a nice padded uh, case now that's if you buy the the full kit um, so, uh, oh, sticking with the polar alignment scope uh, concept for a second, let me uh, get this off of here and out of the way, is um, the um, visualization. Now, I'm fairly tall. I'm, I'm about six foot two, which uh, I believe is uh, around 1.9 meters, uh, and mounted on a, on a uh, tripod. It's often pretty hard to bend down, uh, usually doing this at night when it's damp and cold, and uh, you have to bend down and look through the, the polar scope quite a bit. So one of the things that I found is this viewfinder here. Now I don't know how to pronounce this, I don't know if it's newer or newer or what it is, but uh, uh, this little 90 degree, and you can find this on Amazon, but this green uh, piece here is kind of the magic that makes all this happen. Now I found a website through uh, just various searches, but it was kind of buried. Uh, and uh, Philippe uh, there, uh, I purchased this and it came in just a few days. Uh, he 3D prints these and what it does is it makes uh, uh, a, an attachment from this 90 degree viewfinder that fits right on this uh, polar scope and you can screw that down and it makes it so nice to be able to uh, stand up and do your polar alignment uh, without having to uh, bend over and look up through that uh, maybe on a damp dark night and there's also a little uh, uh, zoom in here you can go one times or two and a half times so sometimes that lets you get real fine uh, uh, polar scope alignment so that's that's really handy um, the the uh, 
Uh, next thing that I want to talk about, let me put this mount out of the way here, is the um, declination bracket and the uh, counterweight shaft here. Now I've seen a few videos on uh, people actually reversing these and uh, I did that when I first got it and uh, a few things. Notice that this this stub here is a little shorter than this end and normally when I, I believe this is the way that it first comes uh, uh, that the the scope or camera mounts on this end and uh, uh, the counterweight shaft mounts on this end and I first reversed it because I saw a lot of people suggesting that. One of the things that does do is it extends your counterweight out just a little bit farther, probably another inch or so, uh, a few centimeters and uh, makes it so if you have a heavier load, uh, you can balance it with your, your counterweight. Uh, but one of the things that happens with the uh, uh, actual polar scope is there is inside of this polar scope, now I don't know if you can see this, but when I'm rotating this end, and what I've done is I've loosened up this clutch, and when I rotate this end, it's actually rotating the whole polar scope all the way through here. And uh, I've seen some diagrams of these uh, uh, taken apart, and the LED that lights up this polar scope, uh, I believe that LED is always on, and there's a little slot that when this thing is straight up and down, is when it allows the light from the LED to illuminate the reticle inside of here, and, and therefore you can see that. But if this is, is ever so slightly off that kind of uh, uh, 12 top dead center position, uh, it, you, you can't see this. And um, if you put this bracket on, and um, you do it the way that uh, it, it should be, you hang this on here, and that allows your scope or your camera to be kind of uh, upright. But if you switch that around, what happens is uh, the light inside the polar scope is off. And to do your alignment, you have to basically move your scope upside down and do your alignment and then rotate it back around. And I find that that's just, uh, that's too much stuff and there's no, no, I don't find the added benefit to be worth the uh, possible messing up of the polar scope alignment. So that's one of the reasons I put mine back to uh, the way that it is. Also, I want to point out, uh, I don't know how often this happens, but one of the things that I did when I uh, was first using this is uh, I loosened up the clutch here and inadvertently, uh, I loosened it so much that it tightened up against the uh, uh, the bracket here, and I was on. I got it stuck. I couldn't get it off, and. Uh, Fortunately, uh, through Ioptron's great support, I shot them off an email, and I think same day came back a PDF of instructions on how to take this apart uh, to, to get that clutch loosened up. They already had that. Uh, I don't think it's a, an issue too many people will run into, uh, but I fortunately was uh, able to, without taking anything apart, recognize which direction this this would loosen uh, actually it's tightened to 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 get it off of this unstuck from this bracket and uh, but their support was great they sent me a really nice pdf to show me how to do that um uh Another thing is with this this bracket that comes with it, and and uh, uh, I thought that I might use this mounted with uh, uh, just a ball mount here. And in fact, I I did this at first with a, a camera, but the problem with this is. Uh, you have to take this whole bracket off to be able to see through the polar scope. And then when you put this on, it changes the weight and the torque of this whole thing and uh, uh, can really kind of just enough throw your polar alignment out. So I don't think I ever use this bracket, and I've, I've pretty much stopped using the, the, uh, the ball mount as well. Um, and uh, during a... a uh, session, I pretty much leave that cap off. And do yourself a favor if uh, if you have a lens cap for your scope or your camera or this, uh, tend to put those in the same places, either on a table or uh, in a pocket. I tend to put them all, all the lens caps in my left front pants pocket. That's where I just know that they're at, and I've done that for years as I've done photography. And um, if it's not there, then I've probably lost it. Um, so um, the other thing that I want to talk about is the, the declination bracket here in the counterweight. Uh, 
the, the counterweight that comes with this is pretty adequate for uh, most of the weights that you're going to deal with. But I use a, uh, if you've watched my other video for my uh, William Optics uh, Zenistar 61, uh, you'll see that I actually had to put uh, an additional weight uh, uh, on here and I didn't have a counterweight at the time this was one of my first sessions with this and uh, I, I have seen some videos that that say okay you've got this counterweight and on this side it's flush but on this this side there's this little indentation and um, one of the things you'll find is if you put this on this is actually the correct way for this to go with the indentation on the bottom and the reason is is when you put this this captive screw I've also heard this called a toe saver screw so that it uh, protects the counterweight from accidentally sliding off and smashing your toes but what you'll find is that it actually lets you extend it just ever so slightly longer and possibly get that perfect balance that you need even though this has gone maybe a full centimeter beyond maybe a half an inch beyond the uh, uh, the travel of the uh, the shaft itself uh, I, I do need to order another counterweight because uh, with my uh, camera, the field flattener, the uh, scope, um, and everything else that I have on that. Uh, it, it's, I just need just a touch more weight to get it in a perfect balance. But I wanted to point out that the, that counter sink is there for a reason. Now you can mount it either way, but uh, if you're, you're having just uh, uh, the need for a little bit more extension there, you can uh, use that as well. Um, Let's see. Uh, oh, one of the things I did when I needed a little bit more weight in a pinch and I didn't have a counterweight is I actually took a pretty pretty big uh, C clamp that you might use for woodworking or or something in a shop, and I just screwed it on the outside of here, and I made sure that I used some tape, uh, black electrical tape, to to uh, hold down the the adjustable handle on there so it didn't slide or move uh, during my session but uh, um, I think that is all I wanted to talk about today I really appreciate you watching uh, please subscribe to the channel and uh, if you have any comments put those down below thanks and have a great day